and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you might have noticed that I don't usually participate in game jams. Every year there's tons and tons of game jams, there's at least two Odom Diaries per year, there's the Brackies game jam and the GMTK game jam along with countless others. There's a lot of them and a lot of people participate and enjoy them. And for me, I have done a few, but only very rarely. Quite a while ago I did participate in the Easy Allies game jam, just because it was a very interesting set of rules which let me make a very unique RPG, and then I also participated in the Mixin game jam where I also made an interesting game mixing racing and RTS. But beyond that I haven't really done any other, so here let me tell you why personally for me game jams don't make too much sense. Now just to be clear, this video is not against game jams at all, they all have their pros and cons. I think they serve a very useful purpose, but at the same time, I personally have 5 reasons on why they no longer make sense to me, and maybe they might not make sense to you too. And in the end, I will also mention some reasons on why you should do game jams. Ok, so game jams. A lot of people love them, some people are addicted to them, and some people get massively stressed out because of them. So as to what I think is the main purpose of a game jam, I believe it is in gaining the ability to be able to finish games. Learning how to actually finish a game is definitely a skill, and one that as a beginner it is pretty tough to get. A lot of people who start making games never actually finish a game, so pretty much everyone who starts game development has folders with dozens or even hundreds of unfinished projects that might even have some interesting ideas but were never finished. Either it's because the developer lost interest in the idea, or they simply jump to another idea as soon as the less fun parts of game development start coming up. So for me, I see that as the main purpose of a game jam, it's to help you improve your skill of actually finishing games, learning how to manage the scope and create a complete experience from start to finish on a fixed schedule, and also being able to push through the less fun parts of game development. Learning how to do all of that is massively important, and if you want to become a game developer, you absolutely must learn that skill. Now as for me, if you've been following the channel for a while and you know about my game dev journey, then you can probably already see how this benefit of game jams doesn't really apply to me anymore. I made a really nice video quite a while ago where I covered my entire game dev journey, it's a really nice video so go watch it if you haven't seen it. In there I talk about my entire journey, which includes making over 40 games in over 10 years. I started out in Flash where each game was kind of like a mini game jam, each game was very small and quickly made from start to finish. Most of those flash games took less than one month to make, so the goal was constant learning. During those 5 years that I was working on flash, I made a total of about 35 complete games and I had maybe 20 more unfinished games. Going through that process making all of those games did give me pretty much the skill that you get from game jams. I learned how to manage scope and actually finish games. Then when I felt I had that skill, that's when I finally transitioned into Unity and started making Steam games. And because of acquiring that skill, I never really had issues with finishing my Steam games. Of course, some of them did take longer than expected, but in the end I always managed to reach the final goal. So that's pretty much my number one reason why I don't do game jams. It's because the main benefit that they provide, which is learning the skill of finishing games, that one is really a skill that I'm already pretty good at. My next big reason has to do with one of the main limitations that almost every game jam has, which is you cannot reuse code. You can usually reuse some art or audio assets that you have, but usually code must be written entirely during the game jam. On the one hand, I can understand why that rule exists, it's essentially to stop people from grabbing something they did a long time ago and just repurpose it for a new game jam, but on the other hand, again if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've certainly heard me repeatedly mention the importance of writing good clean reusable code. I'm always encouraging you to be as efficient as possible and reuse as much code and previous systems you have as possible. For example, I have my super useful grid system which I have been building in tons of videos on this channel. Let's say that I want to make a city builder game for a game jam. Does it make any sense to discard all of that and remake it from scratch? Personally, I don't think so. But again, if you are a beginner, then rewriting code is actually a great way to improve your skills as a programmer. However, for me, writing yet another health system from scratch for the 50th time really won't improve my skills at all, it's really just a waste of time. Now one good thing is that not all game jams have this restriction. For example, the Breakfast Game Jam, which is one of the most popular ones, does not mention code at all. And on the GMTK Game Jam, in 2020, the rule was that the vast majority of code must be written during the game jam, whereas in the 2021 version, it now says that you may reuse some pre-existing code. So maybe that means that more and more people are finding the benefits of writing clean reusable code and the rules are changing to reflect that. 
Then for my third reason, it is simply stress. Now I know there are lots of game jam formats, but the majority of them do seem to follow the 48 hour rule. Again, this is great, especially for beginners, for forcing you to make something complete from start to finish in a very tight schedule. But on the other hand, it also encourages people to do things like skip sleep and work 14 or 16 hour days, which is definitely not healthy. You might have heard about the term crunch and how it's one of the big problems in the industry. Game jams pretty much encourage crunch, which can definitely create some bad habits, and if overdone, it can cause some serious physical or mental issues. Now for me, personally, I already have quite a lot of difficulty at achieving a nice work-life balance. I definitely already work way too much, too many hours and too many days, so adding a super stressful weekend on top of that isn't really something that I want to do. So if you are still a beginner and you are still on the stage where you won't benefit a ton from all of the skills you gain in those quick 48 hours, then for you, all of that added stress might be worth it. But if you already have quite a lot of those skills, then all you're doing is really just adding a ton more stress onto yourself for little to no benefit. So as always, consider the pros and cons, what you gain and what it costs. My fourth reason is kind of what makes a game jam a game jam, which is in order to participate, you need to start at a specific time and follow a specific theme. Again, this can be a useful limitation for forcing you to come up with a game idea just on the spot. So if you have trouble coming up with ideas, then this can be massively useful. And also the common start time encourages a community all working at the same time, which lets you bounce ideas off of others and see how others interpret the same theme differently. Now for me, I already have lots more ideas than I have time to do them. I've got tons of ideas I'd love to explore and build a quick prototype. So for those, it really just makes more sense to do them whenever I have the time, rather than waiting for a specific game jump to start. And of course, it makes more sense to do the ideas that I already have, rather than trying to come up with something new based on a game jam theme. And my final reason is really pretty standard. I'm simply already way too busy with tons of things that I already want to do, so adding yet another thing on my schedule that won't really provide me much benefit while also having significant costs, that really doesn't make much sense. There's tons of videos I'd love to make, tons of topics I'd love to research, so at any moment I have something like 20 to 30 specific video ideas that I really want to make, for example, I'd love to get back into DOTS and see what changed in the past year. I'd love to do a lot more machine learning experiments. I'd like to research the ML API and do some multiplayer tutorials. Voxels are really interesting, so I'd love to research that. As well as doing some more basic tutorials and possibly more things on Unity Visual Scripting. Then I also would like to make one more update to my Ultimate Unity Overview course before the end of this year. And of course, eventually, I'd like to get to work on my next Steam game. So the limitation for me to do all of that is really just time, and I find all of those things much more valuable and much more desirable than doing yet another random game jam. Now, since I spent most of this video talking about the reasons to not do a game jam, let me quickly mention the reasons why you should do a game jam. Now, the first reason is exactly the same as my other first reason, which is to learn how to finish games. If this is a skill you don't yet possess, then game jams are an excellent way to learn. The second reason is that it's great to force you for coming up with game ideas and having a strict deadline to get them built, so it teaches you about managing scope and improving your skills as a game designer. Then one of the best things about Game Jam is how everyone plays each other's games and gives feedback. Again, this is hugely helpful for improving your skills as a game designer. You get some very useful feedback which you can then apply to your other projects. Also, if you're planning on working with others, then a game jam is a great time to test out a new team and learn how to best collaborate with others. And finally, game jams can also be interesting if you just need a break from bigger projects. So after spending months or years working on a single project, it can be useful to just spend one weekend working on something completely different. By doing that, then when you get back to your main project, you might see it with a fresh new set of eyes which might help you make a better game. So those are just some of the reasons on why you should participate in game jams. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this one is not against game jams at all. As with anything, there are pros and cons. If you find them useful to you, then by all means go ahead and participate. And if you've never done a single one, then I would definitely encourage you to give it a try. All I'm trying to say with this video is that game jams are not universally good, and if you become addicted to them and constantly jump from project to project and never begin working on something more complex on a more long-term project, then at that point it might be doing more harm than good. But as usual, it's a personal thing, so hopefully with this video you can see my reasons and you can come up with your own list of pros and cons and either do more game jams or fewer. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. 
Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.